Welcome back. You're listening to the special bulletin review, Managing Cloud Services, Measuring Their Value, sponsored by Aptio on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guests here are Nick Rowan, the Cloud Director for Public Sector at Aptio, and Megan Zakora, a Customer Success Advisor also at Aptio. Uh, Nick, Megan, before break, we're talking about this idea of measuring costs and understanding colors of money. And Megan, you brought up one of my favorite topics, technology, business management, TBM. It's something that agencies have been working on for the better part of uh, six, seven years now. Uh, they have a big deadline coming up. I think this year was in their budget cycle. I, I don't know how many people, how many of the agencies actually made it. But let's start with why is TBM important? Why are we talking about it? And, and how does that kind of fit into this broader discussion about managing and measuring cloud costs? Absolutely. So IT spend has always been huge in the federal government. It's been reported through CIPIC for a number of years. But there was the realization that something needed to change. We were basically reporting IT spend based on the way that IT used to be done through projects. And people are moving away from projects. We're looking at things of a total cost of service. Or if it's a more agile lean portfolio management approach, maybe it's a product line that we need to cost out. So with the shift of the federal government moving towards TBM, a lot of folks are taking it beyond the mandate. Especially since the pandemic, we've seen a lot of agencies really pick up on this and starting to see the value of what TBM is really about. It's not an OMB mandate. There is value conversations to be had with the business owners. And so we're seeing a big push from agencies to start implementing stuff, um, whether it's through an automated tool or even through just changing their processes internally to have the value conversations with their business units. And what it allows them to do is actually have that data-driven decision as opposed to a feeling. I've definitely been stuck in a lot of governance committee rooms before where a lot of things were said, I feel like something is too expensive or I feel like this project is going to fail. A lot of things started with that, I feel. And so what we're seeing with TBM here is a really a big shift moving away from that and being able to allocate costs and being able to replicate that. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a new agency where we needed to replicate a cost that was come up with three years ago that then was then reported by Congress and we had no idea where it came from. So it may have been that, like I talked about before, security costs were left out or there was an essential piece of infrastructure um, or it was even just the bodies that you have um, internal FTE supporting a project. So TBM really has allowed people to see what is not just hidden IT costs, but understanding how all IT costs attribute to and towards a mission. And what's important there that we should just maybe underline a couple of times is the entire cost of IT, because so many times agencies have always gotten that bad reputation of, well, of course, it's cheaper for them because I remember back in the mid 2000s, we could talk about a 76 and competitive sourcing. I don't want to go down there and hurt people's heads too much. But that was always, well, they don't pay for rent or they don't pay for they don't they don't bring in that idea of what does your rent cost or your lights or your electricity. So I, I think that's something that agencies are starting to, to understand, especially as they're moving with that colors of money. Uh, Nick, from your perspective, uh, what are some of those things that agencies consider? You know, are there some good standards they should pay attention to? Are there yeah. things around FinOps that, that you, another new term that we're hearing a lot about? Yeah, yeah. no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, TBM and FinOps are very complementary, right? So if you think about the total cost of IT, cloud is one of the services that is being provided and being consumed within every single IT budget. We're also seeing the cloud budget itself go from you know 0.5% uh, in some departments and agencies, all the way up to 14 to 50%, right? So if you can imagine the total cost of IT and half of its cloud, that's where all the bells are ringing and folks are asking new questions about, okay, how do I control this? How do I manage it? What, how does it come in and, and, and what can I do? And I think one of the key things that um, we've seen, uh, you know, with, with FinOps is, you know, it's a community style effort uh, that brings practitioners, vendors, industry SMEs, um, to collaborate together on standard practices to help support, you know, the GSA and OMB and where people are trying to help support, you know, the data that's being provided around cloud and, and how to get there. Um, Megan just talked about, you know, a tagging strategy. Tagging strategy is one part of that, right? So we've got folks like Melvin Brown at OPM helping write a government playbook, which has been published. Version one was published uh, a couple months ago here. Uh, and, and what it does is it really... It's, it's a playbook that helps folks get their arms around who needs to be in place, what executive support do we need, 
uh, to run this program and kind of what are we going to do while we're here, right? So the playbook has all those answers around laying the groundwork for the organization, socializing FinOps, right? And there's education that's available. This government playbook is published. You can go read it if you want to learn more about how cloud costs are incurred and how finance and DevSecOps work together. Um, and then really, you know, preparing the org, preparing the data itself. So we talked a little bit about this during the chargeback discussion on how it gets to the month end, you know, bill or what the dev teams are looking at as it relates to the costs that are being incurred and alerts that they want to put in place with the data, right? So that's where reports and dashboards are really uh, important to help bubble that information out and give folks access to that information and, and make sure that these processes tie together, right? So forecasting for your operational plan versus the forecasts that are of the financials associated to that need to tie together. So that's where the Cloud Center of Excellence, the IRM teams need to get together and make sure that everyone's talking about the same thing during the forecasting cycle. And then what's really good about FinOps is, you know, it's not, it, they're not done with the government playbook, right? The next iteration of it, uh, they're working with, you know, partners and, and, and SMEs um, to, to understand what forecasting cloud, cloud costs look like. Right, so that's active work going on right now through the work group. There's a few, I think there's like 60 people in the group right now and it continues to grow. Um, with that input from each of the different areas, uh, we help kind of bring all the information that folks are trying to solve for, including forecasts coming out. Um, and then finally, it's the, the total cost of cloud, right? Megan was mentioning TCO, you know, making sure that everyone really understands, you know, it's not just your cloud bill, right? It is multi-cloud. You've got on-premise containers. You've got all the things that you're managing today that are virtualized that need to kind of come together in one house to talk about what is the total cost of the things that you are basically running your application, uh, including people, right? So that's really where Optio steps in to help is the automation of bringing that data in, helping tie those costs outside of your cloud bill together um, and bringing that same FinOps, our, our product was built off of FinOps. So the same things that you're seeing in the government playbook are exactly how the dashboards and reports work on the back end including things like business mapping and help support, you know, the data layers that we're, we're managing today. So the complementary nature of the two helps folks, you know, have a, a level knowledge base of how they can work best together. And then when it's applied is how you kind of deal with any of the nuances related to, you know, any existing processes or controls that need to be facilitated. And you can help focus on those instead of the things that are already relatively tried and true through, through TBM and FinOps. And Nick, we'll make sure we link to that government playbook you mentioned uh, on federalnewsnetwork.com, make it easy for folks to find. The other piece of this that I think is really important and you brought up is you're going to have the right people at the table. And we've heard that time and again over the years about technology. It's not technology for the technology's sake. It's an enabler. But when you're talk, talking about costs and you're talking about where those costs go and, and how they're allocated, are the CFOs or the mission owners, do they understand that they need to be part of that conversation? Or is that something... That's the next step, meaning it, it, there's a little bit of a, oh, here it comes, I know you're waiting for it, culture change that has to happen there to is, get yeah. them to, to really say, why, why, do, why do I need to be here? Yeah, just uh, real quick, when we start talking about TBM and the executive reports that are being released uh, as it relates to budget variance and, and managing uh, the footprint, um, you know, the office of the CIO, you know, in a large department wants to see kind of their version of it. And rent. there needs to be some synergy around how everyone else is seeing it. So we're actually seeing a natural evolution of people wanting to expand that centralized dashboard and centralized reporting structure for finances. It helps influence them to want to understand. But we had a uh, public sector summit here a couple of weeks ago where we had, um, you know, our friends from FinOps up on stage talking about FinOps and the government playbook. And one of our senior leaders who runs a TBM office uh, for one of our customers came out of the room saying, I didn't, I never knew what FinOps was and it is creeping on my budget and I need to figure it out and we need to figure it out. Who can I talk to? So we got them aligned with all the folks that are already doing this uh, in some of the areas of uh, some of our other customers and we're helping them to kind of share knowledge share their experiences to bring this information together. So the cultural shift, you know, once the financials get up to a little bit of a threshold, it starts getting forced. Um, but at the same time, folks are interested to learn more. Um, everyone has had their job for a long time and they keep on trying to teach everyone new things. This is a way to learn without, you know, a lot of barriers, uh, uh, you know, in front of that. Yeah, so I actually wanna add on to something that Nick said here. Um, 
you know, FinOps is the new big thing coming down the pike. So everybody's like, oh, I guess TBM is of the path. It's not, right? TBM and FinOps go hand in hand. And a lot of times they are separate offices, but might work in conjunction with each other. And so a lot of questions that we get, or, you know, I get as an advisor is how do I set up this office? How would I set up a FinOps practice? Who needs to be part of it? And the idea here is, is that it's probably not going to be the people who are actually running the cloud. It actually has to be someone who understands the financial piece to it and can actually bridge the gap between the two. What we find is that a lot of folks set, tend to put it into their technical area and then they just miss the mark because they don't have anybody who has the financial knowledge to understand how all of that works. And then like you had mentioned, Jason, the CFO does need to be involved. What we see a lot when people are implementing a TBM practice is people try to take it to the CFO late in the game and they say, why are you doing, why are you stepping on my toes? Why are you doing finance? We do finance. We do like, this is our job. You don't need that. And they just want to cut the budget right away, right? <laughs> because they see that it's costing something. But essentially TBM is the marriage between technology and finance. It's bringing financial data and linking it with non-financial data. So infrastructure, storage, people, all of that, linking it together to get that total cost. FinOps is very, very similar in understanding how the cloud costs are coming in. So you do have to have a bit of cloud knowledge and there's a lot of really great certifications out there that AWS and Azure all have it for free. So you can just go out there and get them. Understanding just that basic part of it is all you practically need. And then having that financial aspect and bringing those FinOps people into the conversation with your DevSecOps folks, not to make it an even longer acronym, but having finance involved in those conversations is essential. And it's not, a lot of people see it as, um, I used to come walking down the hallway and they're like, oh, here comes Megan, she's going to cut my budget, run, you know? And, and that's not the case, right? The whole idea here in a FinOps practice is to um, work from an agile perspective, lean portfolio management. It's just guardrails. Like you guys go and do what you need to do, but I just need you to stay in this lane, right? Don't go over it. Don't start pulling money from somewhere else. It's really just about establishing guardrails and having the conversation. And if something needs to change, great. We can make that decision based on trade-offs because we have the data. So these are like some of the things that we're starting to see in both TBM and FinOps practices as they come you know, to fruition at agencies. Nick Rowan is the Cloud Director for Public Sector at Aptio. And Megan Secor is a Customer Success Advisor also at Aptio. Megan, Nick, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jason. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to the special bulletin review, Managing Cloud Services, Measuring Their Value, sponsored by Aptio on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Aptio.